grounding, earthing, whatever you want to call it, is it for real? And more importantly, are footwear brands that are making money off the purported health practice, like, legit? We decided to dig into the science of grounding, also known as earthing. We interviewed an expert, even tested some grounding shoes to find out what's fact and what's fiction. Or at least a stretching of science. But first things first, what the heck is grounding? Well, unless you're as deep into the barefoot shoe or functional movement world as we are, it's probably not what you think. What I'm not talking about is footwear that keeps you from being electrocuted on a work site. You know, big chunky boots with big chunky rubber soles. No, I'm talking about the opposite of that. I'm talking about shoes designed to let electrical currents through your soles, and yes, it's totally a thing. It's also called earthing, and the practice has been gaining a bit of popularity over the last couple years as more and more brands and scientific studies pop up to offer solutions to help you ground. Which is cool, if it works. Because if it doesn't, well, you're just wasting your money. But let's get back to what grounding or earthing is, and <laughs> brace yourself, because not gonna lie, it sounds a bit new agey. But stick with me, because we're gonna get into the science in just a sec. Earthing is essentially the practice of connecting yourself to the Earth's very low-powered electromagnetic waves. Yup, our home planet has a conductive current. It's just really low, so we can't detect it in our day-to-day -day lives. You know what? I'm just gonna let the expert explain it. So grounding first is very simple. We're talking about actual physical contact with the Earth. This is Gaetan Chevalier, and he knows grounding. My name is Gaetan Chevalier. I have a PhD in engineering physics from the University of Montreal. And in 2007, I became the director of the Earthing Institute. It can be done by being touching the earth directly or by having some conductive products that connect are connected to the earth and you're connected to them because that conducts also the energy of the earth into your body and then you get the benefits of it the planet earth is a, a battery the surface of the earth is the negative pole of the battery and there is a layer of air called the ionosphere that is about uh, 60 miles up or 100 kilometers up in the atmosphere. It's called the ionosphere because it's full of ions and the ions are produced by the sun. These ions then goes into thunderstorms and there is a churning of the charge there and then the lightning come down and charge the earth with electrons. What's more, earthing has shown via scientific testing that it can have some real health and wellness benefits. What we found is that there's also a reaction of the autonomic nervous system quite like within a second or two. It's like, oh, we're grounded. Ah, there's a relaxation that happened of the body. The person might not be aware of it, but we can see it with our equipment. The, the body relaxes, it goes into a parasympathetic mode. But about 20 minutes, Whoop, there's a change again that happens. The heart rate increased, the respiration deepens, the blood oxygenation increased, all saying the metabolism change, and at the same time, that's when we see reduction in inflammation from thermal imaging. Of course, also, it's not a panacea. You have to eat good food. You have some exercise if you can. And the quality of sleep is important. We think it's an essential part of a program to stay healthy. Now, we obviously dug into some of these studies ourselves, and while sample sizes do tend to be small and research is still pretty new, results do seem moderately promising. But they got me thinking. Could other factors show the same results? Like, for example, nature therapy or spending time in nature has also shown to lead to relaxation, less anxiety, better memory, etc. So couldn't these study results just be a result of being outside or maybe practicing mindful meditation? Well, no, because most of these studies were actually done indoors in a lab with participants engaging in normal activities, as in not taking a walk or practicing guided meditation. In some of these tests, participants were just sleeping. That's because earthing or grounding can be done a variety of ways, including via standing on conductive mats, wearing socks you plug into the grounding socket indoors, putting grounding sheets on your bed that basically work the same way, or 
the freeway by being barefoot outside. But that's when we started to wonder, can you get most of the same benefits of earthing by just taking a walk outside or simply practicing a few minutes of mindfulness? Well, yeah, some studies, again, there aren't that many, suggest that you can. Some of the benefits are the same anyway. Meditation and nature therapy have also shown to reduce blood pressure and enhance relaxation. But we couldn't find many studies unequivocally linking these activities to reduced inflammation, so that's where grounding seems to sort of stand apart. The problem, again, is that there aren't that many large-scale, peer-reviewed studies out there yet for any of these things. I mean, compared to Alzheimer's or cancer research. And frankly, not everyone has the luxury of having a free hour multiple times a week to silently meditate or go for a hike. So earthing could be another valid option to give your whole system a, a boost, but most of us can't be barefoot outside all the time, no matter how much we want to. Like in the winter or when strolling downtown. Sometimes we just gotta put on some shoes. I know. I know, I wish that weren't the case either, but honestly, when winter rolls around, I'm actually pretty keen to keep my toesies in some cozies when I go out. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And that's where the concept of grounding shoes comes in. There are a small handful of brands that make them, including one of our favorite barefoot adventure sandals, Earth Runners. We'll drop a link to a review we did of those below. And Bahe, which makes waterproof hiking boots, among other footwear. How the heck do they work? So usually in the sole is a conductive plug that's in contact with the ground. That is then connected to thin conductive wire that's stitched through every layer of the footbed or sandal straps. That, at least in theory, results in the mild conductivity of the earth being able to make its way through the soles and into our feet and thus the rest of our bodies. Traditional shoe soles typically insulate us from any sort of grounding application, by the way, by virtue of them being plastic and synthetic rubber, which is not conductive. You can also buy grounding kits. We actually got an Ion Sync kit from Earth Runners to transform any pair of shoes into earthing shoes, which is pretty cool. We tried it out with a pair of our favorite Zero shoes, then put the three different pairs of grounding shoes we have to the test to see if they actually worked. <laughs> we were super surprised by some of these results. All the shoes worked and gave solid readings when we were barefoot in the shoes and when wearing conductive socks with metallic stitching. And when wearing thicker socks, whether they were cotton, wool, or synthetic, they needed to be damp from sweat to become fully conductive, which took time, several minutes at least. That leads me to my next question. How often should you actually spend time grounding? And are grounding shoes even really necessary? So it takes about 20 minutes to have physiological effects that you know you can notice. So that's why we recommend at least 30 minutes of grounding per day. If you are a healthy person, that's enough. Is there a major difference between grounding barefoot outdoors and indoors with these sort of grounding products like, you know, the socks or pads or patches, things like that? No, as long as you're grounded properly, there's not, not much of a difference. It's pretty much the same thing. To reiterate, earthing is not a cure-all. Definitely do not stop taking prescribed medicine or listening to your doctor if you have medical issues. But in most cases, spending time outside with your feet in the grass or in grounding shoes isn't gonna hurt anything, so give it a go. Just make sure you're doing your due diligence. Maybe test the shoes when you get them. Do some research and read studies before you sink half your paycheck into a new pair of shoes. There, that's my PSA for the week. Cut, print, check the gate, moving on. And if you're into like natural foot stuff, I think you're gonna enjoy the review we did of the Vivo Barefoot Magna Light shoe, which we'll also link to below. Go watch them, get educated, find yourself a new pair of shoes and wander on.